Hi there, I am Wild Humphrey and they call me the Fact Master because I'll tell you all those things you never knew you didn't know. I'm faster than Google. Everything I tell you is from up here and that is a fact. Now you will have heard of the Hundred Years War. This was a war that went on and on and was between England and the might of France. And it all started way back when King Edward III was on the throne of England and his cousin Philip was King of France. Now, in 1337, Edward declared war on France and France had been controlling England since 1066 when the Normans invaded. And Edward III had had enough of this French rule and he was fed up paying homage to his cousin Philip. And when Philip had taken some of Edward's vineyards in France, Edward, really seriously unhappy, declared war on his cousin. Problem was, he didn't really have an army big enough to take to France and he wasn't in a position to do so either because at the time he was busy fighting the Scots. It was all going on then. Nonetheless, he declared war. He saw off the Scots, he raised his army, set sail to France and in 1346 fought and won the famous Battle of Cressy on the 26th of August that year. A raining Saturday morning, he waited for the French, even though he was outnumbered, four or five to one, he destroyed the enemy, because on his side, he had the long bowmen, who could fire arrows, four or five in a minute, whereas the Frenchmen, all they had were crossbows, and they were cumbersome, awkward, and took ages to load. But Edward III's plan worked, well, this was a bloody time. He then went on and took Calais. After a siege that lasted 11 months, Edward III camped outside Calais and starved everyone in there. In the end, he sent a note in telling them to send the richest people out, the burghers of Calais as they were known. Sick burghers came out in chains, wearing rags, carrying the keys to Calais and handed them to Edward III. And Edward decided not to kill them. He spared their life. Even though he was furious, he spared their life. And it was all thanks to Edward III's wife. She begged him not to kill these men because they'd come on and helped. And there's actually a statue commemorating this. But more of that another time because I want to move on. To 1356. Now at Cressy, Edward III had had his son with him and his son was 16 at the time. Ten years on, his 26 year old son was ready to fight his own battle. So what does he do? Edward III, he sends Edward, who was known as Edward the Black Prince, over to France to fight at Poitiers. And on the 19th of September 1356, the Battle of Poitiers took place. It was a Monday and Edward the Black Prince was certainly his father's son. Outnumbered but never outfought and never outthought. He destroyed the French. He kidnapped and captured lots of French noblemen, including the king, dragged them back to England and got a ransom for them. And that earned Edward III a small, well, a large fortune. So these battles were becoming Englishmen's victories all the time. Then the next major one in the Hundred Years War was Agincourt. Now this didn't take place till 1415, a good while after the other two, but various kings had changed places in England. We'd had Edward III, Richard II, Henry IV, and now it's Henry V. And Henry V 
wanted to restore some fighting passion into that country. So what does he do? He says, right, I'm going to France. I'm going to beat up the French. Went to Agincourt, famously 25th of October, 14, 15, like those before him, outnumbered, never outfought, never outthought. He was a tactical genius when it came to battles. Now, it seems like the British, the English, always won these battles. But one, I'm going to tell you now, the most, the last battle of the Hundred Years' War took place on the 17th of July, 1453. Now, the English had lost before this day. They'd lost to Orleans, thanks to Joan of Arc helping the French. But at Castile, there's a guy named John Talbot, and he was fighting. He took his men over there. And on behalf of King Henry VI, who was on the throne at the time, he charged against the French. Now Talbot, he was a bit, well, he's a bit pick-headed. He just believed no matter what, he was going to win the day. As he charged, he realised he was vastly outnumbered. But he knew in the past this hadn't meant much difference. But of course, the French, they changed their attack. They used to be noblemen fighting by all the rules of war, which generally let them down because the English didn't care about rules. They were in there for the win any way they could. Well, on this day, the French, it was their turn. They swarmed all over the English, destroyed the army. And John Talbot, who was the, actually the, the last Englishman left sitting on his horse, was sitting there, not even wearing any armour. And his horse was hit by an arrow, fell to the ground, crushing him underneath. And as he lay there trying to get out from under his horse, a French archer with an axe did the business. And that was the end of Talbot. It was the end of the Battle of Castillon, and it signalled the very end of the Hundred Years' War. And France, although they hadn't won many battles, they won the one that mattered the most. 17th of July, 1453, the Battle of Castillon ended the Hundred Years' War. Now this Hundred Years War saw off many kings and England's final king, Henry VI, well he was no warrior, so it's no surprise what happened there. And that is a fact. The Hundred Years War itself, although it's called that, was a series of many, many battles, but actually lasted for 116 years. That is a fact. So. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Wild Humphrey, the Fact Master. Please subscribe to my channel and tell all your friends because I'll be back soon with some more. In the meantime, take it easy. Cheers.